Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on amplifier. For this video, I'm going to discuss on Class B amplifier. I'm going to discuss how a Class B amplifier actually works. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part four series discussion on amplifier. So if you're keen to know more about amplifier, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on amplifier. I have discussed the class A amplifier. Very soon, I will also touch base on class C amplifier. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, really, thank you so much. Let's quickly understand the characteristics of Class B amplifier. For Class B, the conduction angle for one transistor is about 180 degree. Thus, okay, the transistor conduct only half the time, which means that total will be 360. One transistor will take care of 180. Another one will be taken care by another transistor, which means that they either on the positive or the negative half cycle of the input signal. Okay, don't worry, I come to this shortly. For class B, okay, it's less linear as compared to class A. Okay, and they also have lots of harmonics. Okay, typically, these harmonics will be generated at the output. And in order to remove the harmonic, we need to use a filter so as to filter off the harmonics. Class B amplifier, the efficient, can be as good as 70%, okay, which is much, much better as compared to class A amplifier. For class B amplifier, okay, they can actually use two or more transistor. For this case, I'm going to stick on two transistor. Okay, basically, they bias in such a way that each transistor only conduct one half, okay, which means that either the positive or the negative input waveform. Over here, you can see that this will be the input signal. You can see that this part belongs to the positive and this part belongs to the negative. So as when this signal actually appeared, okay, you can see that they basically turn on the transistor of this MPN. And what happened here is basically the IC will flow. Okay, and this will be short circuit because the transistor is on. And this will be appeared at the load, okay, which means that this transistor, they actually take care on the positive half cycle. Next. When it's a negative half cycle, okay, over here you can see that the transistor again will be turned on. Okay, this is a PMP, and basically the transistor will be so-called turned on by the source over here, and they become short circuit. So from here you can see that they actually take care on the negative half cycle. In short, the MPN transistor take care of the positive half cycle, while the PMP take care of the negative half cycle. To improve the full power efficient of the previous class A amplifier is by reducing the waste power in the form of heat. Okay, remember for class A, with or without the input signal, the VCC is actually turned on all the time, which means that IC will be drawn all the time. And when we actually draw the current, Okay, it can be a form of heat and it's actually unproductive or it's useless to generate an IC because there is no input signal. Hence, this class B amplifier is to resolve this issue. Okay, hence, it is possible to design the power amplifier circuit with two transistors in its output stage. Okay, so instead of one transistor, for this case, class B, we are going to have two transistor at its output stage. Okay, this creates what is commonly termed as class B amplifier. 
or sometimes we call this a push pull amplifier as you can see from here okay we push it and then after that we pull it also so this is how they get the name push pull amplifier the push pull amplifier use two complementary or matching transistor an mpn type and the other pmp type with both power transistor receiving the same input signal together that is equal in magnitude but in opposite phase to each other okay so let me explain this so basically when the input signal is on a positive half cycle the transistor mpn will take care of this input signal and hence i actually has the positive half cycle when my input signal is at the negative portion okay this transistor pmp actually take care of the negative half cycle and during the negative input signal the transistor is on and they basically support the negative half cycle which is illustrated over here okay this result in one transistor only amplified one half or 180 degree of the input waveform cycle while the other transistor amplified the other half or remaining 180 degree of the input waveform cycle with the resulting two half being put together again at the output terminal okay so in short okay at the output basically i just add in these two positive half cycle and negative half cycle and they are actually amplified okay so over here okay i guess you have some idea how does a class b amplifier work the conduction angle for this type of amplifier circuit is only 180 degree or maybe 50 percent of the input signal so you can see from here the positive take care by this mpn the negative take care by pmp transistor so what they do is basically they work 50 percent of the time okay so in short this pushing and pulling effect of the alternating half cycle by the transistor give this type of circuit the name push pull okay but are more generally known as class b amplifier okay so in short class b amplifier is actually a push and also a pull as you can see that the current can basically push it after that they actually pull to support the pmp transistor okay on the next video i will discuss in deep detail how a class b amplifier work in this schematic here Okay, so again, if you find this video helpful, please consider to like this video and also subscribe to this channel. Please also turn on your notification bell. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's understand a little bit what is actually the crossover issue. Okay, before I go over the crossover issue, let me explain this diagram here. Okay, the figure below shows the modified single side circuit diagram of class B power amplifier with input and output signal waveform for a common collector CC BJT amplifier. In short, over here, as I explained, for this amplifier, basically they take care either the positive or the negative. For this case, they actually take care of the positive half cycle. As you can see from here, these two positive half cycle actually appear at the output. Okay, and then the other half session, which is the negative half cycle, they don't actually take care by this transistor, will be another transistor. This case here, I want to highlight, can you see this 0 0.74 volt? Sorry, 0 0.7 volt. Basically, it will be the voltage to energize this transistor. And basically, there will be a little gap of 0 0.7 volt here. Okay, I will use the next slide to explain how we can have this crossover or distortion. Okay, there is changes in distortion in the output waveform from a class B push-pull amplifier, which is due to the fact that there is a time interval in which both the transistor does not conduct, which means that both transistors, they actually are not biased at all at a particular short time. Okay, so therefore this non-conduction time interval happen in this BJT base complementary power amplifier because the transistor conduct only when the input signal amplitude is greater than BPE. Okay, remember for transistor, if you are lesser than BPE, okay, I cannot bias the transistor. 
I need to have at least BPE so as to achieve the biasing of the transistor, which means that they are actually closed. Without this, okay, the transistor actually will not be able to close. Add by the fact that during this time, the other transistor is off. Okay, at this particular time here, okay, so let's take this as an input signal. Okay, if you still remember, this is the positive half cycle, this is the negative half cycle. Okay, remember I told you earlier on, I need to have 0 0.7 volt, which is the voltage of BPE before the transistor will be so-called energized or turned on. And because of this issue, you can see that I have a little gap of 0 0.7. Okay, so on the negative half cycle will be taken care by another transistor. Okay, so basically this is how it works. So for this positive half cycle, Q1 will be conducting and Q2 will off. Okay, for this negative half cycle, it's a reverse philosophy. Q1 will off while Q2 will be conducting. And this thing actually go on and on. Like what I mentioned earlier on, okay, there will be a short instant okay, where the VPE okay, must be sufficient to be at 0 0.7 volt before they can actually so-called close the circuit of the transistor. Okay, so over here you can see that there will be a very small interval that both the Q1 and Q2 are off and this potentially create a crossover distortion. Okay, so basically for class B amplifier, I actually has this undesired effect which is the crossover distortion. This is because both the transistor Q1 and Q2, they are actually off. Over here you can see that one of the positive half cycle, for example, will be taken care by one of the transistor. Another one, the negative half cycle, will be taken care by another so-called transistor. And because of this, okay, you again, I have highlighted because of the voltage to turn on the transistor. Basically, because of this, I potentially has a short interval. Both Q1 and Q2 are off. And hence, therefore, I will have this crossover distortion which is undesired. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.